And all scientists are driven by this enormous curiosity. They want to know why something does this or why something looks like that or how something works. And every scientist is, you know, just driven by this enormous curiosity to, to find the answer to some question. And, and it's the same with us, that, you know, we're wandering around in the desert, in the wind, in the sun, in the heat, and we know if we look hard enough, we're going to find a fossil that will tell us something we didn't know before. And it's, it's just, it's incredibly um, obsessive, really. You just know if you keep at it, you know you're going to get the answer. And the frustration is that you can't do it all the time. <laughs> because you have, to, you have to take breaks and you have to write up and you have to raise money and all this sort of thing. So it's, I think that, that you know, for, for anyone going into science, whatever branch of science, they have that same curiosity that drives them. For me, the most important message that comes out of this whole study is that we have a common origin and we are one species. And that common origin is, is, is really important because there's so many prejudices in today's world, there's so many divisions, cultural divisions, but they're all skin deep. You know, even our skin color doesn't mean anything in terms of evolution. It just means that we, our closest ancestors were living in a different latitude from people with dark skins, people with pale skins. It just determines which latitude your, your re recent ancestors lived in. So, so I think, you know, the, to, re to remember that we're one species with one common ancestor is a very unifying theme. And, and anything that helps reduce prejudices and, and makes people realize that different cultures and different um, traditions are, are just things that enrich our lives rather than things to be the cause of wars and conflicts and things is important. Those early years were really, they were exceptional and we didn't, I, I don't think at the time we appreciate really how lucky we were because we were going into this huge site that nobody else had worked. So nobody had been in there looking for fossils. So everywhere you went there were the most incredible fossils and many of them were, were specimens of our, of our ancestors. And so, you know, we were finding sometimes more than one a week and if we didn't find one a week we felt we were doing pretty badly. And it, you know, now it's quite different. I mean, now you really have to look. But the evidence is still there, and there's still an enormous amount of work to be done there. Um, and it's, it's just a really incredible site. I think that it really is, um, there's, it would be find, f difficult to find another site to match it in, in um, Africa at the moment. And added to that, because we've been working there now for, since 1968, well, on the east side since 1968, the east and west side, and the Omo Valley was actually worked before that. So there's a record that people have been working there for decades now, and so that, that basic data and basic understanding of the, of the lake's history, and we now know where the sites are, you know, how, how old the sites are, and you know if you want to answer a particular question which the best sites to look at are. And now we're going uh, over sites that we worked 20 years ago or more, and finding more things have eroded out, but we go there knowing the background of the site. We know the background of the evolution of, of the animals, of the humans, of the environment. And so we have a, a good context to put everything in now. So it's, it's really very special.